In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to do a motion link. So um, we're going to assemble our Lego winch together and we're going to link um, a motion so that our gears mesh together. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete a couple of uh, uh, joints in here so uh, my pieces come apart. So you can see I've got kind of the handle attached already to the spline which attaches the gear. Same with this one. Um, if I spin it around, you'll see. Um, that I've got my components together already. So I've had a bit of thought in that already. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is put my um, joins in. So joining, um, just before I do that, I'll show you. Um, I've already, I've got my pieces, my base pieces locked in. Um, and I've got a motion, sorry, I've got a join here um, to um, define how far apart these are as well. So um, that's sitting with this one sitting 31.2 millimeters away from each other. Um, so first thing is first, I'm going to capture position. I'm going to define that I want this one next to this one. It's going to bring the parts with it. Um, I have got a motion um, revolute. So you can see that's revolving around that axis of the hole. So OK that one and everything will come up together. I can um, click on this one here and edit edit that joint as well. So um, it should be this one, edit joint. Um, I know that the gear needs to sit three mils this way to sit up against the, um, the side of this cradle. So that's got that lined up. Um, take your time, check that it spins. Next one, we're going to go join, capture position. Zoom in, make sure it's the center of that axis and the center of this one. Um, I need to move this one three millimeters across as well. Yours might be different, it's just the way I, I model my parts and I can see they're sitting together. Um, once those links are in, double check that things are working so you can see the gears are spinning but they're not meshing together. The next point is to do a motion link which will control these. Um, gears together. So what I'm going to do is just uh, make sure they're sitting okay. So just adjust it so it looks good. Then we're going to come up here to assemble and we're going to do a motion link. Capture position um, and once again I need to select the join of, um, that are going to be linked together. So those two I can see when I press capture position, they kind of bounced out of um, out of position. So I'm going to cancel that. Um, I think if I go join and go continue instead, no, I'm not quite sure why that's happening. Um, so let's have a play again. Sometimes this is about problem solving on the go. So join capture position again. That's looking better. Let's do the motion link. That's better. So um, the two joints are going to put together is that one and that one. And then um, I've put a formula together um, on the sector page. Um, you can copy it from this video or you can copy it across. Um, essentially we're telling it that there is um, two different gears. They need to move at a different speed. So um, if I paste this one in, you'll see what it is. Um, you can see that, um, let's get rid of that first bit. Um, we wanted the gears to revolve 360 degrees. We've got a 20 tooth gear and a 6 tooth gear, so I've got that in the formula. Don't worry about this last bit, and we need to delete one bracket off the front. Um, and when I OK that and reopen the motion link, you can see it puts this times one degree in and the extra brackets anyway, so um, don't let that confuse you too much. If I play this now, um, you'll see that things spin on a, a bit out of control. Um, so we are going to have a look at what we need to do. So let's change this one here to a minus um, 360 and click OK. And if I move the gear now, you can see they mesh together nicely. So that's the motion link. If you have trouble, there's a few things that you can try. Um, the minus, that sometimes will change the direction of the gear. 
or change, try changing the um, the divide in here. So you might want to do the six divided by twenty instead. Um, that will change the direction and the speed. So have a play if you want to paste this one in the um, depends which uh, join you selected first as well. So if you need to swap this around too, that might also work. So have a play, see what visually works for you. Final little test. Yes, it's working nicely. So the next thing we're going to do is call a motion study. This is going to allow us to do a rendering. So um, the motion study uh, I've only just learnt about. So what we need to do here is select firstly the join that you want to do the motion study to, which is this one. When that comes in, it says what degree value it's at. Now, um, we want that to be zero. This stumped me the first time I did it. So I'm going to cancel and I'm going to click the uh, motion link here and I'm going to reset that one to zero. So now it's at zero. If we do the same thing, so motion study and we select that join down here, um, you can see it's at zero, which is perfect. I'm going to um, click on this 100 line, so that's the furthest out we can do, um, and I'm going to change it to 360. Now I'm going to change my speed down to zero, or as low as I can, and if I click go, um, it's going to run that as a little animation. At this stage, um, it doesn't look like we've done anything, but if I click OK, it comes up here under a motion study, and it sits here too. We can deselect this. Um, if you know how to do your materials rendering, you can render up all your work. I'm not going to do that right now though. Um, for this task, it's not really that important. And to kind of access that motion study now, um, we need to go into the rendering tab. I'm fairly new to rendering as well, um, yet to have a bit of a play. Um, but if we go up to render and render again, um, we'll just click the teapot. Um, Let's uh, have a look under these ones. Um, so if we go video, cloud render, um, standard. I haven't tried local render, but cloud render um, will kind of send the data off. It processes without using your computer processor and then sends it back when it's done. You only get a certain amount of credits when you do this. So um, you can't do massive renders on the educational license. Um, so render quality is standard. Um, if you click render, what will happen is it'll come up with a, a box in here. It'll have this kind of processing window and it will probably take 10-15 minutes to um, send it back. Um, once that is done, um, you'll get a little play symbol up in the top here. The play symbol um, isn't available on mine. I'll see if I can find it. But you have to do a second render, which will kind of create this kind of like a moving link. Mine's a little bit kind of like it's jointed and, and jumpy. Um, but once that renders through too, you have to save it to the lowest quality. Um, but once that renders through, you can do a download and you can download it to, um, you know, as a video to your local machine. So you can include it into a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation. Um, it would look really awesome, um, all the reflections render as well, so if you had some rendering on here too, so colouring up the gears, it would look really cool. Um, I'll see. I've just done a second rendering, um, just so I could show you this process. So I've, I've opened my finished rendering, and then it's got render as and the little play symbol. That's your motion study. So if I click that now, it gives me some um, different kind of variables here. So um, if I go to um, a, a reasonable quality, it'll tell me that I don't have enough credits. Um, so um, for the sake of just proving that we know how to do it, we'll do, do it at the lowest standard quality. It doesn't come out amazing, but it, it shows you that you've done the process. Um, if you click render there, um, it'll lead you to um, that last one I showed, which is already done. And it should open up as the um, playable rendering. Um, so that's how to do the motion links and the motion study, exporting it um, to a downloadable file.